So according to FPL rules, the wildcard can be used any time before Sunday the 29th of December at 6.30 p.m. UK time. So basically that means you can use your wildcard any time before game week 20. So in this video, I'm going to be going through some of the best wildcard strategies. And I know it could be seen to be a little bit too early, but your wildcard strategy is going to depend what team you're going to go for in game week one, because you can plan from now when you're going to use your wildcard, what players to kind of focus on now, and then wildcard out a bit later on. Um, stay tuned though, as we'll get right into it. Yo, listen up, Ru is stepping up the game Where fantasy premier league runs in his veins From transfers to captains, he's always on top Guiding you through every game week non-stop They say Ru got that salad flow Welcome to the channel, enjoy the show Wild cards, free hits with so much vibe If you're hunting for success, then make sure you subscribe Good day, mate. Welcome back to the channel. I'm FPL Root, and welcome back to another FPL video. So in today's video, I'm going to be going through some of the best wildcard strategies for the upcoming season. So this might seem to be a little bit early, but I think having a strategy in place now, even if you don't stick to it, means that you can decide what players to bring in for game week one. Um, I think it can make a huge impact if you are planning from now on when you're going to be using your wildcard. So before we do get onto that, though, Please make sure you do like the video, subscribe to the channel if you're new, content throughout the whole season to help you win your mini leagues and climb the ranks. Also, last chance now if you did want to um, sign up to Fantasy Football Hub, they're doing 50% off. It's going to stop um, after the season starts. So if you're going to do that, scan the QR code, use the link in the description. It does help me out as well, which I do really appreciate. But first of all, the first strategy is using the wild card before game week four. So this is considered a bit early I'd say um, I know within previous seasons personally as well I've kind of used my wild card sometimes from game week three and four especially the old days but last season I waited till the last week to be honest with you I just didn't feel like I needed to do that um, I don't know if there's because there was a lot of kind of good budget players like Palmer um, where I just got them in and then had loads of money to kind of play around where I didn't really need to rip up my team but um, the first strategy is to do that before game week four. I think the reason, the main reason for that is, is the first international break of the season. So a lot of people like to use their wildcard in an international break because it does give them a little bit of extra time to decide what players are on. Because I, um, I know a lot of you are just like me that um, having a wildcard is fun. So as the longer you got, the better it is. I know some of you might even say having a wild card is a lot of aggro and a little bit stressful, but really it's supposed to be fun. And in the international break as well, because there's a lot of time and there's a lot of transfers made, so um, there's a lot more time for players' prices to go up, which you can capitalise on by playing the wild card in that period. Also, um, you can really, really target the first three fixtures and you don't really need to look further on to be honest with you so you you can just look at fixtures one to three who's got the best fixtures bring them players in and then not worry about the rest of the season because you do have using that wild card before game week four um, also you can like load up on I guess the most informed players and the best value players that have come out from the first three game weeks in your wild card for game week four so for example let's say someone like um, let's say Rogers, who, who a lot of people have been talking about from Aston Villa, absolutely smashes it the first three game weeks. Um, then you can bring him in straight away in game week four, whereas a lot of people might be a bit wary that is it worth using a transfer to bring him in, but because you're on your wild card, you can take that risk, um, especially this season where you can actually roll your transfers um, after using a chip. So that's definitely um, a key thing for that. You can also invest in teams like Chelsea Villa, um, Everton, Man United, who have really, really good fixtures from game week four onwards. And um, by doing that, you can really kind of target them fixtures um, for them teams, where I guess a lot of people um, might be looking at one to eight game week period, one to nine game week period, even a one to six game week period. But because you are using a wild card in game week four, you don't really have to worry about that. So you can really, really kind of target the good fixtures following game week four. Um, also, you get three weeks of information. Like I said, 
players that have done well, you can bring them in. Players that teams that even look good potentially. If I don't know if Liverpool smash their first three games, you can be like, okay, cool. Liverpool are going to be good this season. The thing is, though, yes, it's a good thing, but it is only three game weeks, so it could be a little bit too small um, sample size to kind of base long term selections on. So. Um, Yes, you get free game weeks of information, but you only get free game weeks of information at the same time, um, which is a lot for first of the season. But we've seen so many times throughout the years that players do start the season well and potentially tail off after a few game weeks. So you could get stuck with all that. But for me, I do think it's a good chance to really, I guess, be aggressive and kind of get in front early by having the best players for the first three game weeks. But for me, it's probably a little bit too early. Let me know what you think in the comment section below and we'll get on to the next strategy. So the next strategy I did want to talk about is before game week six. So I guess similarly to before game week four, it is pretty early on, but you do get that little bit more time. And I think that little bit more time can actually be crucial to kind of assess the state of, I guess, teams and the transfer window's done as well. You can see if teams are playing well, if players are playing well. You can see what new signings clubs have brought in, how new managers have performed. You get a lot more information. And you also get players back from suspension, potentially Reese James, or Reese James will be back. Um, players back from injury as well that have been injured for the first part of the season. So it is a kind of a key, a key game week because you've had the international breaks. So you get the extra time off without any fixtures. And the season's like in full swing almost. The season started, a um, few games were under the belt. We know who's going to be good. So it's definitely a good time to play it. There's also a massive fixture swing um, in this game week. So um, managers will probably want to use a lot of transfers anyway. But if you end up playing your wild card, you won't have to use them transfers and you can carry it on towards later in the season. So that's a massive, massive bonus for you if you are going to be playing it in this game week. Um, and like I said, for example, like teams that have had players injured, teams that have had players at international duty, Euros, Copa America, they're all back, they're all starting, um, they're all kind of raring to go for the rest of the season. So it is a really, really nice, I guess, game week to play it. Also, it's right after Man City v Arsenal, which is obviously going to be one of the biggest games of the season, one of the toughest games to call of the season, likely going to be the top two this season as it was last season and the season before that. That happens in game week five. So that's out of the way, basically. And then you can load up on City and Arsenal players once that fixture's done. Because really, you're going to want loads of players from Arsenal City. Let's be honest. They're the best two teams, probably going to be the best two teams this season as well. And the fact that you can do that without having to worry they're going to play each other, I think is crucial. You can also target... Newcastle and Liverpool players in your game week one squads because they don't have the best fixtures from game week six onwards so they have great players so to go without them from game weeks one to six and then for the for kind of the, the rest of the time it's going to be a bit tricky but because you're wildcard in game week six you can actually load up on them players um, in your game week one squads and then take them out in game week six when their six when their fixtures don't look that great also, Arsenal and Brentford, um, you don't have to get them from game week one because Arsenal have three tough away games. They have Villa away, Spurs away, City away in the first five. So you don't have to worry about bringing in Arsenal players straight off the bat because you know you have the wild card where they've already played Villa away, Spurs away, City away. So it really, really does help you in that aspect. This is why I'm saying try and plan what, what wild card strategy you're going to be on from now because... If you can do that and then you can bring in the relevant players to fit that strategy from game week one, it's going to help you in the long run so, so much. I do actually really, really like this strategy. My only concern would be you're kind of potentially going without Arsenal for the first five, six game, for the first five game weeks, which is for me not ideal because yes, they have tough fixtures, but they're going, to, they're going to do well in them fixtures probably. They're going to score goals. Their defence is so good that you could miss out if they decide to smash all three teams. That's going to be unlikely, but it could happen. And they're a good enough team for that to happen. So, yeah, 
yeah, I do think it's a good strategy, but I would probably wouldn't put my, all my eggs in not having Arsenal if you were going to go for this. I'd probably have one or two still. Let me know what you think in the comment section below and we'll move on to the next strategy. So next strategy is before game week 12. So it is another international break. So all the same rules apply as before game week four. You get the extra time. You can bring in players that are going to go up in value to build that team value. Um, so you get kind of a whole also get a whole 12 weeks of information and um, plus really you get 12 game weeks but you get uh, the international break so it ends up being about 13 14 weeks which is a lot of information by that point you're going to know who's going to be fighting for the title who's going to be playing well who's going to be on pens who's going to be on set pieces who's going to be fighting for different positions in the league and that information is so valuable however it is quite a long time um, to go for without wildcarding. The fixtures, like I said, are good for Arsenal, are bad for Arsenal, then they're good for Arsenal. You're going to have to use a lot of transfers to, to sort that out, which could be a bit of a headache and could kind of bite you in the backside a little bit. However, Arsenal, Brighton, Wolves and Chelsea all have very, very good fixtures from game week 12. So really, you can load up on these players and potentially for the next 10 or so game weeks, which, okay, does sound good, but how many Wolves players are you going to want now that Neto's gone to Chelsea? How many Brighton players are you going to want? Potentially Joe Pedro, potentially uh, Minter, potentially Lewis Dunk. Okay, Arsenal, you're going to want to load up. Chelsea, you're going to want Palmer. You're going to want a couple players. But for me, I don't know if that's worth it, to be totally honest with you. Also, Liverpool and Crystal Palace have tough fixtures at that point, so you can potentially take out Liverpool, Crystal Palace and bring in Arsenal and Chelsea. But again, if Salah's firing, are you really going to want to take him out because they've got tough fixtures? I'm not too sure on this strategy, to be totally honest with you. But let me know what you think in the comment section below and we'll get on to the next one. So this one's one of them strategies of having a strategy to not have a strategy. Um, Basically, this one is to kind of just stay flexible, which I really, really like because I think with FPL, anything can happen with, from injuries to different suspensions, the team's not playing well, um, anything can kind of happen. So by staying flexible, you can make a decision on when you need, you need to wildcard based on your team. Also, with this strategy though, there is a few suggestions I would make. So. For, for me, I'd select a low-risk game week one team. So that's that means basically Haaland, Watkins, um, players that you know are going to do well and that have done well in the past. And I would build up the squad depth as well. So maybe have two really, really good bench players, whether that's your fifth midfielder, your third forward, and then a decent defender as well. Because you you're want you going to want to save as many chances as possible. Also, the good thing about this one is you don't need to commit, which for me... That's the big thing is, do I really want to commit before the season has started? It probably could work well if you commit and that's the right strategy. But if you don't commit and that's the wrong strategy, then I'm not too sure on that one. Um, you should be able to actually build a team that is decent for 12 game weeks if you do stay flexible. So although kind of a wild card in game week six does seem really good, um, the team kind of remains the same, the whatever that wildcard team is from game week six to game week 12. So they're pretty much the same team. So really, if you're gonna wildcard in game week six, you might as well do it then, then do it in game week 12. And at the same time, if you can build that team with transfers from game week six, you can make that last the game week 12. So that's what I'm saying. It's about being flexible in this strategy because if you have most of them players already that a lot of people are going to wildcard in game week six, they're going to be the same in game week 12. So really, do you need to wildcard? Um, that is that is kind of the main thing with this strategy. And you're also flexible to be kind of in a position to jump on when you need to use your wildcard. So a lot of people use the thing of like forced into a wildcard or um, I guess had no other choice because you run out of transfers, you're... Um, your half your team's injured then this kind of gives you a way to do that because you're so flexible that you're just going to play it when your team needs it and that's how I play a lot of the time I don't really plan my wild cards 
Um, it'll be interesting to know what you think and what you normally do as well in the comment section below. But for me, I really do like to stay flexible. However, it is very, very appealing the game week six wild card because of the fact that you have six, we have five weeks of of a lot of information. Signings are done. Everyone's back from injury. You know what teams are going to be playing well, and then that team's pretty good up until a lot of the season, really, and at least 10, 15 game weeks in terms of fixture-wise. So for me, that does sound very, very appealing. And the fact that you can, with the game week six wildcard, the fact that you can build a solid team for six game weeks, yeah, and don't use any transfers or use one or two transfers, then that, you can still roll that over this season with by playing a chip. So they don't, they don't wipe anymore. And you can now say five transfers. So... Really, you can go into game week six with five transfers. You can use your wild card, come out of it with still five transfers, and then you've got the freedom to do whatever you want. You could even do a mini wild card in game week 12 if, you're, if your team was that bad. So for me, I genuinely think that because of the rolling of transfers this season and the fact that it doesn't wipe your transfers playing the chip, I genuinely think playing it early is, a, is the good thing to do and building your team towards that first six game weeks but let me know what you think in the comment section below like I said QR code on screen you get 50% off Fantasy Football Hub if you did want to sign up to that into their membership um, it's a good way to kind of get all your stats get all your um, transfers done nice layout as well it's, I find it really helpful just to see and plan ahead um, the, the next few game weeks uh, hit the link in the description if you want to sign up, 50% off, scan the QR code, and I'll catch you in the next video. Don't forget to like the video. Cheers.